In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the first five hires that you need to bring on in your company as you are growing. And as a fundamental framework to think through this, you wanna think about, especially for the first five, that they are really just helping you do more. And so think of them as extensions of yourself. Over time, we're gonna transition from that philosophy to really building a team and departments. But each of the five will more or less correspond to being an extension of you and doing the repeated tasks that are time consuming but do not necessarily add as much value as some of the more strategic pieces of each of the roles, all right? So the first of these things, in terms of the order and sequence that you're gonna be hiring them in, is gonna be in the reverse order of the value that's being delivered and or what you can get in the marketplace in terms of dollars per hour. And so the more valuable the skill, the more it will cost. And so you wanna replace the skills that cost the least amount of money for you, right? Should make sense. And so typically, one of the first two hires, and this can happen in any order, is gonna be one person who's gonna be more of an administrative help to you, because as you start a business, especially in the beginning, there's lots of administrative work that needs to be done. It must be done, but it's not necessarily the high value work that's gonna move the business forward, but it must be done. And so number one will typically be someone in that type of role. The second hire will typically be uh, somebody in the customer success or customer support role, all right? And you're still likely going to be heavily involved in the success or delivery of the product or service that you have, but this person is going to help take away some of the repeated tasks that you are doing that are not necessarily value additive, but must be done. All right, so this is like handling returns, talking to customers about repeated tasks, uh, you know, switching out billing stuff. And again, you'll see that there's some crossover between this administrative role and the uh, help with delivery because in the beginning, that's where a lot of your time is going to start occurring. Note that you're still probably marketing, you're still probably selling because that's what you need to do at this point in the game. The third piece will likely be the first salesperson, all right? And that's because, and again, this will depend based on how good you are at sales, right? So like if sales is not necessarily your strong suit, then you might take this earlier. If it is a strong suit of yours, you're gonna take it a little bit later because your dollars per hour in that role continues to grow. And so I don't want you to take these as hard and fast rules. These are just general rules of thumb that the corresponding framework that you need to be thinking this through is how much value am I making per dollar and then how much would it cost me to replace that dollar per hour so it's like if I do not generate a lot of dollars per hour and it doesn't cost a lot of money then that will be the first thing now if I'm generating a lot of money and I can replace it for a medium amount of money then it's like well I'm it's the net difference, right? And that's what we're looking at in terms of how we're replacing each of these roles. And so right off the bat, you're gonna have some sort of administrative help, then you're gonna have some sort of customer support help, then you're gonna probably hire some sort of sales role. From there, now it kind of depends a little bit on the role. You'll probably have someone who starts assisting you with the promotion or marketing of your business. So this is oftentimes somebody who's doing setting or doing prospecting for you, or if you uh, generate customers based off content, this is probably somebody who's being a videographer of some sort or help you create the content in some way, some of the more laborious parts that are not as value additive, that would be kind of that fourth looking higher. And again, that can flip with the sales role. So like if, for example, you're a killer salesman, then you might have somebody who's prospecting and doing some of the intro calls for you so that the majority of your time is spent just closing, which is the higher value task. So hopefully this common theme is working out and making sense to you because it's like the number one question I get or one of among the top questions I get is like, what order should I hire people in when I'm starting my business? The next one is, and again, all of these roles can can be some of these things can be fractional right in the beginning so you'll probably have some sort of fractional bookkeeper which is really filling the gap for the finance hole so they're just doing basic level of accounting for you to get so you just know how much money you're making at that time they can help you take control of your expenses etc over time that role will probably come in-house but much a little bit later so like before you're at a hundred thousand dollars a month you probably don't have a ton uh, that's going on so just having a fractional bookkeeper is sufficient same thing with you know somebody who's helping you with your taxes somebody who's helping you with uh, legal stuff like you'll have a lawyer but it's not going to be in-house. And so as you're moving up this value ladder in terms of the, the value per hour and the cost per hour that you can get this, the process of entrepreneurship, if you think from a big picture perspective, it's always just buying back your time so that you can level up the amount of time that you're spending on high leverage activities. Now, here's a key point. I see this happen all the time. I'll see entrepreneurs replace all of their time and then they don't do anything with that added time to add more value. And so in that case, your profit margins will go down because you are not continuing to add and do the things that generate the income. Now, as you progress, each of these roles become more solidified and these people ideally, in a perfect world, actually can ascend up and then have teams underneath of them. The person who was helping you originally now has a team of people helping
helping them. The administrative person originally, you might have to send them into a director of operations who's, who's really pushing each of the tasks and projects forward. They end up being a mini project manager for you if done properly, right? The salesperson might become a sales director or a sales manager who's actually leading and training uh, a series of of salespeople. Now, I will tell you that a lot of times people have the difficulty of going from an individual contributor at a high level to a manager. It's one of the hardest transitions in business and it's commonly messed up by most people. All right, and so one of the things that comes with experience in entrepreneurship is you recognize the people who have the talent to do the thing that is required later. So you can hire those people earlier on. Now, you can't take you know a COO of a billion dollar company and put them in as your operator, one, because they probably you can probably can't afford it, and two, they're probably not that interested in the opportunity yet, unless you have funding or some sort of vehicle that you can acquire that talent earlier. And so as a final concept that I want to introduce to you is that whenever you are starting a business, you are incurring debt. And this is something that I'm now very, very convinced of. And so you are incurring lots of types of debt. You are incurring life debt. You are incurring management debt. You are incurring financial debt. You're encouraging technological debt, right? So that a technological debt, which by the way is probably if you had another next full-time hire, it's usually a tech person who's helping you manage the CRM, build out sites, and kind of make all the things that you want to have happen or know should be happening in the background actually happen in the real world. They're helping manage passwords, onboard new new people in terms of getting them logins, all that kind of jazz. And so in terms of the debt that you're incurring. If you don't have a good CRM that's in place, you will incur that debt and then you'll have to pay it back with interest later when the company's bigger. If you don't have a good bookkeeper in place, you'll have, your finances will be a mess. And as you scale, you'll have to fix and pay back that debt later. If you have not the best people or the values are not there, then you're encouraging management debt, which means you'll have cultural debt, which means you'll have to pay that back later. And so the idea in terms of moving quickly in the game of entrepreneurship is recognizing which debt I want to incur in what order. And so I used to poo-poo the idea of investors and venture capital and things like that who gave people money to start because I was like, that's not real entrepreneurship. And I think as I've you know weathered or aged in the game, I don't see it that way anymore. I just see it as just fundamentally an advantage is that they're choosing financial debt to incur fewer other debts, incur fewer operational debt, incur less talent debt, management debt, CRM debt. Like you might have to have a bigger CRM that's better for you so that you can scale with having to switch platforms, which is common, but it would cost more money up front. So if you're bootstrapped, you might not be willing or able to do that, but if you have funding or you have money that you're willing to invest in the business up front, then sometimes you can do that. And so one of the things that is difficult with people who grow bigger companies faster is that they skip through the earlier stages because they know how to do it. And so it's the reason that each of the companies that we've had subsequently have grown bigger, faster, stronger than the companies that preceded them because we are willing to incur less of the other types of debt rather than financial debt because we have the finances. And so we can skip steps in the growth process that we normally off rail a quarter's worth of growth by implementing a new CRM or offload a quarter, you know, or send me back another quarter because I have to fix my financials or send me back another year because I have a whole bunch of management team in place who are inexperienced and I need to get more been there, done that's on the team and fewer I'll learn as, as I go. And so as we're thinking through this and you're hiring your team, the two major frameworks that I'd like you to take away with this is number one, you're hiring in reverse order of value that you are providing and cost to the marketplace that you can use to replace it. And so typically, you will one, get customer support, two, some sort of administrative role, three, some sort of sales or setter role, four, some sort of marketing assist, five, some sort of fractional bookkeeper, and or a sixth, which would be your IT person or tech person. That is usually the beginning of the core team, and then it Christmas trees down, so each of them, right, now have five people hanging off of them. Let me see uh, as this does freeze, there we go. You'll have five people hanging off of each of these, not necessarily five IT people, but hopefully you can understand it, especially on the, the marketing, the sales, and on the delivery those are the teams that tend to grow as the companies grow and the you know IT and, and finance departments and HR departments which end up getting built over time there's a ratio that is a higher ratio as in you need fewer of them per amount of customers or employees that you have in the company and so as you scale that is framework number one and then framework number two is be mindful of the type of debt that you are incurring and make sure it is the type of debt that you would prefer to incur if you have the choice